In this video, I want to take you through my process of working with point clouds, and in particular, this is one I took of a space with a Sitescape app in my iPhone. Sitescape now has a app where it allows you to organize your files, and uh, this is one of the files that I scanned with my iPhone. And to compile all these, I'm going to actually bring all the scanned files that have been exported as a PLY file into Cloud Compare and just open all those at the same time. Now that they come in, they're going to be um, kind of, they fall right in the same place. The way to make sure that this happens is that you don't close the app while you're actually saving your scans and you don't move around while you're saving your scans. So you scan once. Once you're done with that scan, go ahead and save it, keep the app open, and start scanning again for the second time. So we'll select all the files, we'll merge them down into one point cloud such as this. And once you have that point cloud created, um, you can pan around, look at it however you want to. Uh, we're going to go to File and Save. We're actually going to save this out as an E57 file. I'm just going to keep it open, actually. I'm going to open up Autodesk Recap. Um, in this app, you can uh, basically get files ready to bring into AutoCAD. So I'm going to do a new project, import point cloud. I'm going to give it a name for my project and a location. And then we'll do proceed. Then we'll go here to the E57 file and just drag that right into the bullseye here. All right, so that's going to import index scans, kind of process these things, and then um, and then you can bring it in. You're good to go. So this, I don't feel like there's much you can do in this actual software. <laughs> it's kind of uh, simplistic. So I just use this as like a middleman to get from the scan to point cloud into AutoCAD. So now that we have this model, we're going to go to uh, export and I'm just going to save it as a RCP file. Export failed. I'm just going to save it actually is what I'm going to do. All right, so now that we have the RCP file saved, I'm going to go to a project here. We're just going to open up this CAD plan. I'm just going to move all this stuff into the project folder real quick. All right, since we're going to be XRFing that in, basically, I'm going to go to um, insert point cloud reference. I'm going to scroll and find that point cloud there. We'll do open and OK. And we'll just place it in there. So if you notice, when I was in recap, I didn't rotate the model or do any of that kind of stuff. So it actually comes in with um, Y facing up. And so I need to actually rotate that. So I'm going to rotate it three-dimensionally on the x-axis, I believe. Rotate 3D and pick a point. We'll do negative 90, which basically put it upside down, so I should have done 90. But now that we got that, we'll just uh, rotate it 180 and we'll be good to go. All right, so now we have the right orientation. It's not necessarily lined up um, with our CAD file here. So I'm going to go to top-down view and um, actually not use my three-dimensional mouse here. I'm going to go to the top-down view and move this into position and kind of rotate it to where it needs to be. I'm going to use the section plane cut and cut through cut through this
That'll allow me to see a little bit better when I move it into position here. Now I need to move it down vertically so it aligns with the floor of my CAD plan. Okay, so once I have this aligned, we can go to uh, any view and actually start to measure dimensions and get some heights and, and things like that to confirm some dimensions of the space. Um, now, scan with an iPhone is, you know, it can only be so accurate, right? But um, it does give you a good kind of like general overall confirmation that the space is the kind of in line with what your field measurements were. So if you took some field measurements, confirm with a laser and then kind of back it up with some 3d model imagery in a po point cloud format, you are um, really kind of covering all your bases and being able to get a lot of information from uh, being on site and really not having to spend a tremendous amount of time um, documenting every little square inch, instead relying heavily on the point cloud scan and um, just confirming that with your overall dimensions of the space. That's pretty much uh, how I tend to use point clouds. So, and then when you're not using the uh, the file, you can actually unload that and um, and it's there for when you need it. So you've got the point cloud in the file lined up where you want it to be, but then you also don't have to deal with the uh, added weight of having all that uh, all that information in your drawing all the time. So it's extra up there if you need it, and it's gone when you don't. Well, I hope you found this video useful and that you start to implement point clouds into your workflow and hopefully that helps you um, capture more data on site so you can answer a lot of questions later when you're back in the office uh, and stop wondering what you might have seen.